Okay, it's, uh, we're about five minutes behind. I, that's no problem, but I don't, uh, don't want to delay any longer. Unless these four people are going to walk in the door. You in the right place? Yes. <laughs> Just starting. All right, well, thanks for attending. Um, this uh, talk uh, I presented uh, to um, the JAB committee for uh, primarily targeted at integrators. Uh, are there any integrators here uh, who do site integrations? Um, any total beginners in Joomla in the audience? <coughs> audience? Um, what about developers, coders, programmers? Great. So I need you guys to help me out because we're going to do some really, um, we have some rules for integrators and people who don't look at code so much. And so I, I really appreciate some of your input um, and basically kind of try to get a loose guide together for beginners. Uh, I'm not a hardcore programmer and I certainly appreciate your uh, comments on some of these points we're going to bring up a little later. Um, so thanks to the organizing committee for uh, allowing me to come today. Uh, the guys have done a really great job. This is a really superb conference uh, compared to the other ones I've been to. The, the concentration of people is, is really phenomenal. And thanks to you folks, too, who uh, registered and voted for all the talks, including, including mine. It was really an honor to be uh, selected. Um, a little about myself, if you don't know uh, who I am. I'm, uh, my name is uh, Victor. I'm on the um, JED editorial team, so for any of you who have extensions, I've probably seen them or talked about them or something like that. So you, you may know me or my colleagues uh, from, from those emails and, and JED correspondence. Um, I'm Canadian, but I live in the American Midwest, very near Chicago. Uh, but I'm from a really tiny place in the Atlantic with this funny, one of these funny time zones. So uh, I make a calendar, but I don't really have any clients from here. So that's, I don't know if that works with my calendar. I hope so. Uh, and of course, I have some extensions that maybe you've heard of. Um, Jake Alpro and SH404. I know some of you in the audience use those things. Come on in, we're just starting, guys. If you want extensions. Um, so, you know, the purpose of the talk is, you know, how do we find extensions and how do we evaluate extensions um, to make sure that they're uh, either do what we want to do and, and probably most importantly, even if they don't do everything we, that we ask of them, that they don't break our site or make them insecure in some way. And this is one of the most important things that integrators and new users to Joomla struggle with. And, and if they don't have any experience with code, I don't think they really have a good resource. You know, if you search for that in Joomla, how do I determine if this extension is safe? Yeah, I don't think you get too, too many useful topics. It's full, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, hands up if you've ever, and I'm gonna ask you to keep your hands up, okay? So if you've ever installed an extension, let's put your hands up, all right, everyone. It won't be calisthenics, just keep your hand up, all right. Uh, if you um, open the zip file before installing it, keep your hand up. The last extension, just, just think of the last one you installed. All right, so everyone with their hands up, open the zip file, right? If you spend five minutes looking at the contents of, the, of what came out of that zip, for five minutes or more, keep your hands up. Otherwise, 10 minutes? Half an hour, good. All right, so yeah. So obviously, I think we've all at some point, if not the last extension, when you go back to when you first started Joomla, said, oh, what a great tool. Let me just install this and install that. And we've all had one of those experiences or one of those clients who's done that you know, to your chagrin. So um, that's really is kind of the, the goal is there's a lot of danger inherent in the third party application uh, field, not just in Joomla, but of course in, in other areas and we tend, Joomla tends to get a lot of flack from those IBM lists I think are they where they say the most vulnerable, most vulnerabilities and we know that a lot of those come from third party extensions, right? So we need to um, protect ourselves against a kind of a whole host of things and, and this is supposed to be an icon, not a word. Um, but yeah, there's cross site, uh, cross site scripting, file permission vulnerabilities, phone home functions, uh, domain or time restrictions. Uh, and, and or license conflicts. And, and these are all things that you can't just tell when you take a zip file and throw it into your site and make a menu item and then you know, kind of start playing, right? Which is how a lot of us start. Um, but beyond that, it's not just is our site safe, there are other reasons that you might want to examine and become an expert in extensions or at least be able to educate yourself um, of, of new extensions. And it's kind of on both sides. If you're an end user, person who makes one site for his dog club or his pet or something, you, the safety is probably the main issue, okay? You're not thinking too much about GPL, you may not even know what that is. For implementers, um, we have value, I'm an implementer also, 
Um, we have value, or our value to our clients is not only our expertise in what works and how to get the right end product and you know, the illusion that we call a website at the end is all these parts together and we try to make it look as one. That's one value. But the other is our knowledge in the safe extensions, the good developers, the code that's scalable or extensible or extendable, right? So that knowledge that we get as we build these sites, I, I really think that that's essentially our critical and integrators or an implementers critical um, values that they save the client from having to kind of learn all those things or pay someone else to learn those things. We're the experts in that field. So we have a vested interest also in kind of coming up with a trusted set of extensions um, and creating you know, that safe site using those extensions. So where do we find file extensions? I don't say the obvious one. Where else do we find file extensions besides directories? Anywhere else? Google, right? We've all done that. And lots of those hits go back to these directories. Blo Twitter. Twitter, recommendations on from friends, either blog or Skype, right? I, was, I almost had word of mouth, but I said no one in Joomla says word of mouth except at these meetings. It's all on Skype, you know. Uh, yeah, so, so there are lots of places that we can find extensions uh, at trade shows or down in the, in the hall at, at the front, but we primarily rely, of course, uh, on directories. And they have three main components, and I'm going to touch a little bit on this, and, and most of you know the JED, so I'm not going to go into heavy detail. Um, but basically, they have a, a hierarchical a category system, a categorical organization. Uh, they have a rating system and some way to, to look at things that are new or featured or you know, somehow for some other reason impressive. So this is a, the JIT entry page. And uh, I took this um, maybe yesterday. So we're above 5,000 extensions. So it's, it's pretty incredible. Um, the new search, which a lot of people seem to like. Um, I went looking to find out how many components there were versus modules versus plugins, but in the new search you can't, you can't sort by those things. So I didn't go any farther than that. I, I can't really give you a breakdown of how many. In the old search you could do it, but it was a little clumsier. So um, importantly in this number, there are almost a thousand extension specific plugins. So community builder plugins or K2 things or you know, so there's all kinds of things that aren't really standalone separate pieces of functionality. So and probably a little more than that because some of them aren't always in, in categories that get counted towards that big number. So we probably have around 4,000 different extensions that, that do you know, all the functionalities that we use. Other than that, um, I'm not sure that I, that I get a lot of information out of the JED homepage. And I don't know if you agree with me. Um, basically, the main thing I get are the categories. These are random, so I'm, not, I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm not going to learn anything there. And just above the fold is the new and noteworthy. But even if you go down below the fold, you're not actually getting a lot of information until I think you get down. I think at the bottom of the second fold, you see the, uh, the editor's picks, which are outdated a little bit, and, and a few other newly updated, those links. So they're kind of way down here somewhere. So I don't get a whole lot of value here, except I probably search right away. Does, any, does everyone search right away when they go here? Right? Anyone else? Get, is there something else about that I'm missing? Because I want you to tell me. What do you guys get from the home page? I don't get too much. So I get a, yes. Updated, right, that's, that is on here, but I th it's down here somewhere, right? Yeah. Right. Have you ever wondered who it was for? The directory. That page. Well, I will tell you I that. Go, sometimes I go through the Joomla site and I come to a page and I think, you know, well, I'm not one of these clever people with a PhD in computer science writing three line extensions for Joomla. Uh, so this is, this is clearly a page for those clever boys. Right. Uh, I will tell you that, um, you know, basically the top of this page used to be the most popular or the most highly rated, something like that. I forget now, maybe about 15, 16 months ago. And kind of after listening to the community, um, I'm on the JED team, so we, we talked to people and we just said, well, we need to, we want to make this a little better showcase for developers. So obviously developers love the JED because it sends them really high quality Google traffic, especially the people who make money off this, right? So it's definitely partly for them. And the change, the recent change about maybe a year ago, um, was to give non-popular or new extensions uh, a voice. So that's where this big block, we've got a dozen new uh, random extensions. But besides that, there's actually not much information. Um, I actually don't even know how the noteworthy is calculated. Do you know, Peter? Sorry? I don't know how new and noteworthy, I don't know what algorithm uses to select these two. So I, I can't, I, I don't know who it's targeted at, but maybe that's a question we should be asking. I will tell you that the developers were pretty happy that we got some traffic to non, you know, 
you know, old, long-standing extensions. So uh, that top part was directed there. But otherwise, I, I think I would rather see more like a common directory where I see some more subcategories, maybe the popular subcategories all across here. You know, that seems to be the most, that's where I would like to start when I go to a directory. But if you pick a, uh, a random category like calendars, for example, um, at the top you see the subcategories, and then here are the popular ones, the new ones, and the recently updated. So I get a lot of value out of this page when, once I've selected the category. So I think that first page really should be where I select my category. And you can do it, it's just not very obvious. You know, it's just a, it's kind of like a long menu. Okay, so a few things here. You see that um, if you look at the first entry, this is the most highly popular, most highly rated um, extension in this category. So that gives me some good information. You can see it's four to five stars. A quick note on stars, that's an average. So it's somewhere between, you know, I don't know, 3.875 and 4.125, you get four out of five stars. You're not getting an exact number here. This only goes in half increments and it rounds each way. So um, this is, you know, probably over four, could be a little under four, but you know, four to five is good either way. Um, the new extensions here, and of course the recently updated, so if you're watching this category, you, you use some extensions, you can, you can kind of keep your eye on that, okay? And then all the subcategories also, you can get to quickly. So I really like this page, you get a lot of information here. And then when you go into uh, one of those subcategories then, pretty much all that goes away, and again, you're ranked by, um, uh, in this case, the, the, the reviews, and again, you, you know, this is, all, these are, all these are four out of five, and this is where you can really start saying, which one of these might I select uh, for my calendar needs, for example, okay? So everyone's seen these screens, I'm not gonna spend too much time. Uh, I'll spend a couple seconds here. Uh, if you take a, an extension listing, there's a, a fair bit of information that can be gleaned that may not be, it, it's obvious, but you know, if you think about it differently, I think you get a little more information. So I'm looking at event list, which is a very popular uh, event listing application, as, as the title suggests. Um, the first thing I usually look at is right here. It was submitted on the 5th of March, 2006, and it's had 500,000 views. I mean, that's a half a million views. It's very, very massive, and it's been around a long time. So without even looking at anything else, I feel pretty good about this extension. This guy's been around for four years. So if I'm building this for a client, I want him to stick around. I want him to be developing, so I, I like this so far. And Christoph is great, by the way, I know him. So I'm kind of being a little tongue in cheeker, of course, but uh, it was last updated in July. Okay, we're almost a year in. That's a little concerning on the other hand. So I like what I see, but that's kind of an old date to be unupdated. It is possible he has a newer update on his site and forgot to update his listing. Uh, but I prefer that was, you know, sometime in 2010, right, if I was really going to start to use this in a serious way. Um, the rating that we already saw, you see the number of votes. This rating is based on how many votes there are, right, almost uh, uh, 300. And over 300 people have this in their personal JED profile as one of their favorites. So this means 300 <coughs> users clicked on this link and said, yeah, I want to keep this in my kind of personal extension bookmarks. And you can get to those, of course, if you're logged into to this site. Um, I always like to see links for documentation and support. You don't always see these and a demo. A lot of times you just get a download link sometimes and that's about it. Um, and then any, any editor's notes here and for the commercial extensions you'll probably see a note saying either you need to log in or you need to log in and pay before you download. So you kind of get an idea if you can test it kind of quickly because here you can just download it. There's no, there's no issue except that there's in this case more extensions elsewhere in one of these extension specific categories. Remember I told you there are a thousand of those or more on the JED. Okay, so this is basically kind of how you go. The last, I, I can look at the reviews here, but I, uh, I'm going to deal with the reviews separately. The first couple are good, and there's 166, so I'm pretty happy. This is a good extension, most likely. So the upside of the JED, then, is that it's the, the largest directory, and there are other directories out there. I'll, I'll show a couple in a minute. Tons of traffic. Why is, why is the JED having a lot of traffic good? Why, right, I've got developers and users. Why is it good for developers? Some developers here. Why do you like good traffic, lots of traffic at the JED? Shout it out. Shopfront. Shopfront, that's right. So it's basically you're getting high quality traffic. People might want to buy stuff, right? And people are going to use your extension, you know? And so if they don't use it, you're not going to find the bugs or make it better or find the features you want, right? So it's good for getting reviews and feedback on your work also, even if it's a free extension and you're not making money off it. Uh, and it's good for users kind of for the same reason. When I go to that site and I see 300 reviews or 300 votes and 166 reviews, people have interested and I know they've tested it. So it gives me more confidence either that it's really good or really bad depending on what I find in that, in that listing. So having a high traffic site obviously is critical. And I'm not positive, but I'm guessing it's the most high traffic 
area of Joomla.org. Is that true? Yeah, it has to be, right? Yeah. I mean, just recently, I had to upgrade the servers and, and these sorts of things. Um, and the other, I've called this an upside, some people will call it a downside, uh, is GPL only extensions, uh, both free and commercial. And I will tell you that we, um, for a long time, we just asked people to tick a box to say if they were GPL or not. And if they were, we've mostly uh, approved it. But probably for the last eight months, when we get a new listing and sometimes an old listing that has been called to our attention, maybe it was reported by a user or had some security vulnerability, when people submit uh, or update our, uh, their extension listings, we now ask them to, to, I mean, we require that they attach a copy of the extension so that we can uh, editorially examine it for uh, proper GPL compliance, trademark compliance, copyright headers, that sort of thing. So we give it more scrutiny than we have in the past. Now, what we don't do is do a security audit. We do not do that, and, and you should know that as integrators. And that's, that's where my talk will end on, on that side of things. So it's still up to you to make sure that in the long run, it's always going to be on, on you for your, for your clients or for yourself. But I'm going to give you a few techniques, um, especially for the beginners, um, to help you figure that out. Jet, the JED is far from perfect, and uh, that would be a whole other class probably on <laughs> how to fix the JED, right? Uh, it doesn't have any templates, like other directories. So if you're looking for templates, which are extensions, you're not going to find them there. Uh, I'm pretty sure the languages are gone now. They used to be languages listed. Are the languages in a separate place now? They are, right? Still there. Still there. They're still there. Uh, do people vote on them? Actually, I have never looked. I don't know, but it's very useful to, to go there. Ah, oh, good. OK, good. I didn't know that. I, was, I thought they had made, there was an effort to move them off the JED. Oh, OK. Or maybe it's just the official Joomla accredited languages, maybe? Yeah, they have only accredited languages. I think they took off the unaccredited ones. Yeah, I don't know if there are languages available for all the components. That's definitely not the case. Okay. Yeah. So they did tighten up the language stuff. So thanks for reminding me of that. I never go to that area of the JED myself. Um, some extension developers like me are JED editors. Not everyone, but some of us are. Uh, that raises conflict of interest issues. So uh, if I have a program that I sell or that I develop, and then um, something happens, somebody submits a, a, a comp competing application, then I have to recuse myself from that and try not to talk to my colleagues on the JED uh, so that they can make an independent decision. I mean, that's never perfect, but that's what we try to do. Um, but if you're that person who submitted the competing product, you might think, oh, that's not fair. He's you know, giving me a hard time. So we try and separate that as best we can. But you know, unfortunately, extension developer, well, Good and bad, good or bad, extension developers know about extensions, so you do need some expertise there. Um, but that, that is an area for improvement also. There's also a strict um, terms of service, and we, the JED is the primary vehicle whereby, whereby OSM exerts a trademark control. Um, not Well, it's certainly for extension developers, and so uh, that's one of the things you, you have to have a the proper trademark um, compliance, uh, which is related primarily to the domain, but also to the logo and that sort of thing and of course the GPL license. And I just did a, a summary here um, of some of the different extension directories for Joomla, uh, CMS Market uh, and Best of Joomla. Has, who has not heard of CMS Market? Anybody not heard of CMS Market? Not heard of Best of Joomla? So these are, these are two, uh, Best of Joomla is a very big template directory but it does have extensions. CMS Market was um, set up to be a combination directory and marketplace. Uh, but it hasn't really grown very much. And I did have the original version of this talk had kind of a full analysis of each one. But I thought for these purposes, this, this would kind of be sufficient. So unlike other kind of IT websites, there are no listing fees uh, on any of these sites that, that are public, for sure. There are none. Um, there's always an issue when you read a review online, like hosting reviews are, are ridiculously notorious for this, that they're fake reviews that they're paid to the website to do, right? So uh, of course, the JED and CMS Market, um, I, I inquired about this directly, don't have any review listing fees. Uh, I asked Best of Joomla if they did, but I didn't get a response back. Is there anyone here from Best of Joomla who can tell me one way or the other, or know somebody? If you do, please have them email me. Um, I don't think they do. It's certainly not listed on their site, but they make a lot of money in advertising, and they sell a lot of advertising space. So I know that it's obviously a commercial, commercial uh, venture for them. Um, so I'd really like to know to, to update this table. And I'm comparing it here to the directories for Drupal and WordPress. If you don't know, there's essentially only one of these run by the appropriate, uh, by each of these two projects. And they don't have any listing fees uh, either. Templates, it's only best of Joomla. And I think it's pretty well agreed that the best of Joomla has the best template directory in terms of you know, the, the amount 
uh, and all the voting and ratings and previews, it's quite, there's actually so much information on the site, it's a little hard to use sometimes when you're trying to get some information on a, on a template. Um, so that's a really good feature of the of best of Joomla, but uh, we don't, you know, we don't have templates per se on, on Jed. Is there other plans have you heard? I was here sometimes we might have a template directory, but I never heard anything solid. I don't know if you, if you did, Peter. Joomla OS dot DE. Yeah. So I think you can download from there also, right? Yeah. So um, best of Joomla is a, they just link out to the providers. So people submit their templates there. I think it's a bit of a different concept, but you're right, that's big. I don't know that's a big directory also. More, more than, uh, 1,500? I'm pretty sure these are closer to 3,000. But still, there, there are lots of template houses, but the reason I'm, I'm putting it in this list is that Best of Joomla, and I'm not familiar with this directory you're talking about, but it has, like the, like the JED, it has reviews and ratings and all those things, and that's kind of what we're talking about today at this part of the talk. File hosting, this is an important issue, and, and you may not know it, so I'm going to spend a moment on it. Uh, you do not have to host your file, you cannot host your files on the JED. So when you go to download, that it sends you to the developer's site. A recent change is, as I mentioned earlier, we now require that you attach your listing so that we can look at it, but that's only for our editorial purposes. We don't obviously distribute that. Uh, some developers were concerned that we would, um, and as a matter of fact, I just spoke with someone who said, you know, you really should update that to make it really clear that, you know, and convince them that you're not going to do anything with it. So I'll, I'll be bringing that up with the team when I, when I get back. CMS Market has an optional uh, file hosting ability, so if you don't want to have a website and you just have a thing, you can... You can post it there and you do a cost sharing with uh, CMS Market in that case. Best of Joomla does not do file hosting that I could tell, but here's the big difference. Both Drupal and WordPress have an absolute requirement that they host your files. This makes it very difficult if, um, well, to, in the Drupal sense, if there's, um, and, and Drupal users correct me here, my understanding is that in Drupal they host your file but they kind of control how many projects they have. So they don't want 10 calendars or they don't want 10 Right? So if you have a new application and you want to submit it, they say, well, why don't you just join this project? Really makes it hard if you want to be a commercial developer, obviously, right? And the Drupal is strictly non-commercial. WordPress, you host a file, has to be non-commercial and GPL, like, like on the JED. Um, but you can, they do allow you to have like a, um, a light version that they host, which can link out to buy a pro version. So there is some opportunity if you're an extension developer in WordPress, um, even though they do do file hosting. So I guess I would say we're lucky that, that we don't have a file hosting because I think it's allowed a, a big community of developers to do their own thing and a lot of innovation. So I, I like that about the JET. Um, the, the, the three project sites have license restrictions for GPL, but CMS Market and Best of Joomla do not. Um, platforms, of course, uh, the first three are Joomla. CMS Market does WordPress and Drupal, but they have almost no extensions there. Um, and these are dedicated, obviously, to those applications. And uh, editorial control, and I think this is also an important issue when you go out to other sites looking at extensions, what's the editorial control? It's volunteer for the JED so that we don't have a vested interest in whether or not you get published uh, for the most part, and we rec recuse ourselves, as I described, if that's true. Um, and I think for Drupal, it's a one-time only editorial control, and then I think they, feel, they push people into that extension if you have a, a second extension. I don't think there's, I, I know there's no editorial control on these. Uh, you submit it and then other people kind of vote it up or down based on that. So it's not an editorial control issue. So um, I think we, we, we keep the quality high because we do exert that editorial control. Even though we also do license restrictions and trademark um, enforcement that way also, uh, there's a couple things we do, but I, I think that's an important part of our directory that uh, can get overlooked sometimes. And uh, somebody uh, reminded me of this today. When you're, when you're thinking about extensions, there's the extensions directory. Um, when we find a security vulnerability, we actually unpublish the listing from the JED so that we, you can't see that there's a low vote because somebody's site got hacked, for example. So I just wanted to point out this URL um, that you can go to and look at some of the extensions that might have a vulnerability if you happen to get it from a different source, for example. So none of these would be published on the JED uh, unless the security patch got fixed and you know, a fix was published and that sort of thing. Okay, so when you think about, so that's how we, you know, we know how we get, any, we know how we find extensions. When you come about evaluating them, you have to keep in mind a few things about the JED that um, you have to use it to taper the informa uh, temper the inf information. It's not a review of service. So if you have somebody who makes an extension but never contacts his customers, or even if he gets a free extension, never helps with bugs, 
that's not going to be on the JED. We get lots of reviews, and we always do this because they're not reviews of the, of the software. They're reviews of the person who's distributing software or the website. So if it says, oh, I, I downloaded it, it had a bug, and I had three weeks later in four emails, I didn't hear back. That doesn't tell anybody. It doesn't do you any good. It doesn't help you determine if that software works or not. Maybe he had a bad server, or, you know, maybe, maybe him and the other guy had some other personal conflict. You don't know. You're not going to get that on the JET at all. And we do get a lot of really pissed off people. <laughs> I, sub I took the time to submit this thing. This guy's a, a crook. You know, why are you putting the software up there? We get a lot of that, but that's not our goal. We try to stay out of that. Not a bug repository. If you have a specific bug, talk to the developer. You know, the kind of reviews that we like are, um, it was supposed to do this, uh, or I, um, the specific bugs and error messages we don't report. If that's all you give, we won't publish it. It needs to be kind of a more, more like a review, you know, something more like an essay, really. And it's not a place for commercial disputes, and that's kind of related to the first option also. So if, if the guy just ripped you off and wouldn't give you a refund, that's not our business. You have to deal with your credit card provider or whatever. So we stay out of that. Okay, so you found an extension. Now what? Uh, I've just picked this one, uh, Ninja Content. It's kind of similar. Um, it's got you know 33,000 views, five out of five ratings, so probably close to you know probably above four and three quarters. Only 18 favored, but it's only been around since uh, last May. Been updated in December, and not much since. And the support link, so it's okay. Um, does it do what you need it to do? This is the easiest part of your extension evaluation. You can install it and say, does it meet my basic requirements for functionality? That's not what I'm here to tell you about. Assume, presumably, you've done your homework. You do want to know if it's buggy. If you do the things that you need it to do on a regular basis, say it's a multi-user you know, contributions or something, uh, which Ninja Content does, uh, right? They let your users submit content on the front end. Does it do that well, and does it keep track of everything? Does it publish things? Does it let people unpublish or edit their own things? You can figure those things out pretty quickly. <clears throat> What's, uh, what I also like to do before I kind of make a, a good decision is to evaluate the developer. And I'm going to stick with the same example. Ninja content is uh, done by Ninjumla. That's their um, extension name, uh, Ninja Forge. Probably you've seen that uh, and these uh, Ninja style icons. Um, so if I look at, this is the extension I looked at. If you look at these two that are here above the fold, you see Ninja Monials and uh, Ninja Simple icons are both five out of five also. So I'm getting a pretty good feel that this developer kind of knows what he's doing. He's got at least three extensions that are five out of five uh, ratings. He's got 60 extensions in total. So that's excellent. You know, this guy must have some experience. I also look at reviews that this person has performed uh, and their favorites. This kind of can tell you a little bit about the person. You'll often find that um, contributors with a lot of extensions don't have many reviews themselves, and that's because we discourage them from that, um, in, especially in their own category. If I have a product, it's not appropriate for me to rate my competitors. Because it's a small conflict of interest there. Even though it may be valid and they have experience, we discourage them from that. So this guy has 60 extensions in probably 30 categories. You wouldn't expect him to be doing many reviews. Um, and you can do this. Obviously, you can go through you know, this whole list of extensions that they do. Um, and then you've got to read the reviews. The good ones are easy, but the bad ones are useful also. And, um, and the point here is that not all 1 out of 5 ratings are bad. You know, often we get reviews, there's a one out of five, it just turns out that the guy bought the product thinking it was something else. It may do exactly what you said it was going to do, but he thought it did. You know, it does A and B, he thought it did C, so he gave you one out of five. That happens, and, and we have to publish those things. Uh, and so here's an example, there's some decent ratings here for this component. Um, and here it says, this, uh, this is a three out of five rating, this is a good component, I like it, and I'm using it, but I have to tell you that I cannot insert an event for a single user or a custom group. So it turns out this user was using Juga or something to create custom Joomla groups. And we've been waiting for 1.6 to do that. We didn't want to support one third party group system. So this is really not related to our extension at all, except for the fact that it's not a feature we support. All right? So this is actually useful for me if I was looking for custom, if I was a Juga user, I would know that. But, and, and I think you know, the owner here, me, has said, you know, well, we don't support third party ACLs. So that's, you know, that's why it didn't support that. But that's useful for you to know that, OK, it doesn't support Juga, but it looks like they are supporting um, the ACLs that are coming in Joomla 1.6. OK, so they're thinking ahead. So you can get some idea of what's going on there. OK, I kind of hope Brian would be here. And I've got to basically put together just a little five step um, evaluate the code for dummies, OK? Uh, and please tell Brian you saw this slide. Um, so basically, there are five kind of basic things you look for as an integrator. 
and developers, uh, stop me at any time and tell me what you think. Uh, basically, the first one is encryption. Uh, as you may or may not know, encryption and GPL, the GPL are not diametrically opposed in terms of, you know, the GPL does not specifically exclude encryption. As a matter of fact, it really doesn't comment on encryption. It's more about making the source code available. And it doesn't, its source code doesn't have to be provided with the file they're installing. So technically, you could have encrypted extensions that are GPL as long as when someone asks for the code, you gave it to them in an unencrypted way. But as a policy decision, the JED does not publish encrypted extensions. And I think you maybe all know that. Uh, and that's because we want people to be able to look and examine this code and not to get stuck. If um, there was one case where a person was selling an encrypted extension, and if their website was down, your website was down. And if their extension's encrypted, you can't go in and figure anything out. You know, basically they had to disable that menu item, but I think it was their homepage. So they were, they were screwed for two days while this guy got a server to work. And I think that was maybe the kind of, this was all happening at the same time as the big GPL debate. And once that happened, we said, you know, policy decision, let's just take the encrypted extensions off there. Um, and the problem, of course, is that you never see 100% of the application. You, you can look at encrypted vendors and they'll say, oh, it's just this one little file which has a domain name, nothing else. But you never know because it's encrypted. Um, you need a third-party decryptor, which are usually free, okay? But there is compatibility requirements. You need a, you know, IonCube XXX, you know, so that's another issue. Uh, it's usually harder uh, to customize because, again, you can't always see everything. Um, and it's often linked to a domain or for certain times. So um, I used to use encrypted extensions, but kind of when that happened, especially for third-party or fourth parties that I'm working for, I just ignore those altogether. And you won't find them on the JID, but you can find them, of course, if you search for them. Uh, in Google. Okay, so then there's um, the basic Joomla security. So I started out by, we all raised our hands, did we open the zip file? The first thing when you download the extension, of course, before you install it, is to open the zip file with whatever extraction program you're using, and all computers have them, one of them by default, and to look for uh, some piece of code at the top that looks like this. And, and this is where, uh, at JDA New York, is, is where I was asked these questions uh, by these beginners integrators and implementers who just didn't know anything about code except some CSS. And their question was, how do we look at these, fi these files and how do we know if they're any good or bad or can we get any indication? Now really they probably want to hire someone who's very, very skilled. Um, but in a development environment, if they want to quickly check, that's, that's kind of what we develop these next few things for. So you see this is, a, um, this is the first line or something like this uh, at the top of almost every PHP file that you get when you extract your extension. And basically, it just checks for the presence of um, JExec, and uh, that's, that's basically um, tells you that Joomla is running, and that this file is running, whatever PHP file is in your extension is running inside Joomla. And we want to do that so that the file is not running outside Joomla and kind of attacking your site, and that's what it's there for, is to, to prevent uh, those other files from operating. And, and, and if other files outside Joomla are requesting this page, it, it says it just stops the script and doesn't go any further. So almost every PHP file has this, but not every PHP file. What, there are some, I've seen some extensions, 95% of the files and of the PHP files have this line, but you know, three or four don't. Why, which ones don't? Help me. What? Uh, if, if it's a class. A class, just classes. Yeah. Right, so it's not executing anything. Uh, no, but, uh, there should not be any uh, um, uh, function outside the class. I see. Ah, okay. I was also looking at the uh, nominees for the best extension um, earlier this morning for these tips, you know, so I could talk to them about you, or talk to you about them, of course. And uh, when I looked at, and of course, the mo as, as of course, all these great developers have all this. But when I looked at Sobe, the first eight files I opened didn't have this at all. They had uh, underscore Sobe2 or something. And I said, oh, how peculiar is that? So they've got an interesting setup where that uh, Sobe2.php, which is the first file called, checks for this. And then every other file is dependent on Sobe2.php, and so it only has to check that Sobe's running. It's kind of a, a secondary way of doing it. So um, in that case, that, that extension is completely safe in terms of kind of making sure it's running inside Joomla, but it was just done a little bit differently. It's the first time I'd ever seen that. Have you seen that? Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. What's Akiba? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, obviously what you need to do is manually inspect every file. That's pretty easy for a plugin or a module, well, most plugins or a module, because there's only a couple of PHP files. 
But this is really difficult to do uh, manually for a large extension. You can think of something like Community Builder or Virtual Mart with thousands of PHP files. It's a lot of work to do. So, um, you know, if you have the skills or you know someone, you can write a batch to test this kind of. But, but I think the exercise in general, there are other things that you can do to look at uh, the developer or get advice from other developers who use other integrators who use those um, extensions. Is this developer trustworthy in other ways that prevent me from having to look at every PHP file if it's massive? Okay, so this is not the only test, but for small things, you can do it real quick. And as you get more experience, you have to do this less and less, of course. So I would expect every extension that Nicholas writes to have this. And once I looked at one, I would probably trust the others. And I would gain that trust in him over time. Well, I mean, I have to look. But. <laughs> okay. Um, the other one is file, file permissions. And um, this is another area, of course, that uh, developers know all about. Um, but file and folder permissions on the server that you're running your extension on, um, kind of, there are kind of a couple of general um, clues. And I'm not going to go into a, a big lecture on um, chmod. But basically, 7, if you have a 7, it means that you can read, write, and execute, um, depending on the user group you're in. And basically, um, the two ones that you see a lot in extensions these days are 775 and 664. And back in the day, I bet you remember Peter, because Peter's our forum guru, of course. Um, there were so many extensions that when they didn't work, the best advice was, oh, just chmod 777 the entire site, right? This was such, so, when, I, when I first started with Mambo, it was like the most common piece of advice I ever got from a developer. Just do all of that, and if it still doesn't work, then we'll help you. Of course, that's terrible advice. It means that you're really opening up all your files and folders for access externally, which you do not want to do, okay? So this is a, a pretty, pretty kind of easy one. Oh, sorry, so here's a, here's a sample piece of code that might be trying to reset these permissions in a way that's not desirable chmod, some directory, 777. So the user group and the um, other. Other is you, the visitor to the site, who might be trying to hack the site. You don't want this to be a 7. You, like in this case, you, 775 would be fine. 777 may be suspicious. Not always, but maybe. So this is just a screenshot from, uh, I use Text Wrangler on the Mac, by the way, which I love if anybody needs that on the Mac. Um, and you can just do a search, and you, you just drop your folder here, drag and drop it into this search in area, type in 777, and look for all instances and see if you find it in your extension. That's a very simple trick, and you don't have to search manually. This will, this will give you all the individual results, but this would be a very uncommon string in most extensions. Okay, So you can immediately find out, oh, maybe there are two files that have it, and if there are, that might be fine, but maybe you want to ask someone who knows or ask the developer, why, why does that folder have to be 777? just so that you know it's not a mistake or a typo or an inexperienced developer. OK, nothing embarrassing in those file paths. That's good, OK. Um, the other kind of basic security feature that many extensions lacked at the time of the fork, remember when Mambo forked to Joomla, there were a lot of uh, developers learning still, um, not only Joomla, but PHP. We had a lot of kind of I think a lot of people cut their teeth learning P uh, Mambo and Joomla extensions, you know, learning their PHP skills. And, and one of the, was there ever, do you remember, a kind of coding best practice for Joomla? Uh, no. Not really, right? I mean, there's certainly no set of standards. We all kind of have some things that we kind of know. And well, the, the, the best practice is to look at uh, some components of Joomla, like uh, the, the web links, because it's uh, the way uh, components could be built. Right. And, I, and this morning, Andrew uh, Eddy uh, was on the video saying that they had redone, he thinks, every component now to the one standard. So you can almost look at any of the core Joomla components for it as an example. And so that's where we're getting some of these best practices from. One of them is to put an index.html file in every folder. This is, uh, this is kind, of a, kind of a defense against your end users, or, or uh, I'm an extension provider, so I have lots of beginners downloading and trying my software, who maybe have yeah, free hosting or GoDaddy, anyone here from GoDaddy? Um, just poor hosting. I've never used GoDaddy, I was just teasing. Um, but we get a lot of people trying to do things, and when we go to look at their servers, we realize the servers are not set up properly for security, they're not hardened, and they can easily kind of have vulnerabilities. And one of the defenses against uh, people browsing your directories, if they happen to type a direct path to a, to a Joomla extension, for example, is, um, is that they can, if there's no index.html, this is the first file that, that, a, that a, web server, um, a web browser would normally load in a directory, 
If this isn't there, it'll just show you the contents if your server's not configured properly. And I'm shocked to find how many servers still allow uh, directory listings. And that's something most, even if you have a shared hosting, you can even fix that in your HD access. You don't even need to talk to the company usually. You can fix it yourself. But a lot of people don't know that. So um, it's not as big a problem anymore, but basically you can look in all the directories and make sure every directory in your extension, you know, when you extract your zip, has this index.html file in there. And basically, this is what's in the file. It just loads a white page so that rather than your directory contents being displayed with folders and files, you see just a, a, a white page and, and you can't get any information. Okay? This is something that's also very easy to fix yourself. If you, if you have a great component and the only thing is they don't have index.html files, as long as there's no other HTML file or PH, uh, any other HTML file in there, you can pretty safely drop something in. No. That's for valid HTML. The head section is missing. And uh, never rejected that. Right, but this, you, would, you would only load this if you were trying to uh, access parts of your site that normally would but never be seen. But, but the fact is that uh, on the IDE, you get 1,400 errors from that hiding series error. I don't know that you would. Uh, a series one. And there's no way to yeah, disable I that in your fixed, IDE? I have fixed a bit of patch for that. I see, okay. Right. Well, if someone browses your contents, I agree with you, it's not necessary if you're on a good host. This is not an issue. But there's a lot of end users who are on bad hosts. For developer using NetBeats. Right, right. Yeah, this is certainly not targeted at developers. <laughs> right. That's what I was wanting to say. Point taken. Uh, and then also, we don't want you to, you probably want to look out for extensions that overwrite core files. And so, um, the last time I looked on the terms of service, you could have an extension on the JED that overwrote a core Joomla file, as long as when the extension was uninstalled, the original file was restored. So um, we do, you can get extensions like that on there, and I think we specify, there's an editor's note that, oh, this, is, this overwrites a core file so that you know. But, you know, for, for you know, beginners, they, I don't think they, some of them wouldn't even know what that, that means, right? So we try to, as much as we can, always avoid this, anything that, that overwrites a core Joomla file, if possible. This issue is almost going away with the, with, as more and more extensions become MVC, because you just do an override you know, in the template, and then you don't have to worry about the core at all. Um, but still, I think, who in here has ever hacked their site for any one reason or another? Right? Um, so almost always, you, the, the quickest... <laughs> Answer is a quick hack, so you can kind of go go to bed or you know get out get out of the office for the weekend. Um, but usually you lose them when the, when when you upgrade the new version of Joomla, so then you have to reapply the hack. And that's okay if you have one or two, but if you have a ton, uh, like uh, uh, did anyone else see the complex site um, session this morning? Uh, he was talking about these sites that had a, it was a site they were migrating from Mambo to Joomla 1.5, and it was just a heavily heavily hacked core. Um, and they had to first understand the hacks before they could migrate it and kind of uh, properly put the proper functioning in without hacking down the, the, the Joomla. So that also makes it very difficult if you hand the site off to a client, maybe you move or you close down your business, your client then may be stuck with something that they don't understand that they need to keep track of these hacks. So if you can at all avoid it, don't hack the core of course, do an override if, if, uh, if necessary. Um, Keep track of hacks, so I always keep a, uh, a, a file in the root of my server kind of with the little things I've done and what data I've done them if, if I ever have to go back. Um, of course, I have that jexec at the top in case somebody wants to browse that uh, directly, but I mean, the, the file names aren't obvious either, but uh, I just like to keep it there. So whenever I go to the site, I go, oh, what did I do to the site? Let me take a quick look. So the log is kind of right there. Um, replace the hack with a plugin or an HTML override, or get the hack included in Joomla. Now, this can be pretty difficult. Uh, but we heard Ryan talking this morning um, from OSM about trying to make that a little easier to get uh, fixes put in the core. Um, what's the fix, Yannick, uh, the time zone? Do we have a fix for it, for the core? But Joomla 1.6 will have time zone support, uh, daylight savings time support. But I, I thought I saw on one of the lists that, that, that people had suggested some fixes for daylight savings time, but it never got in you know, to 1.5. I mean, that's a complicated example, but... Okay. Um, so in summary, uh, we're at the end here. Um, use a trusted directory, and uh, I, I showed you a few. There are others out there. You kind of, if the directory is trustworthy or not, you, only you can make that decision. I think uh, most people would agree that 
They trust the JED, you know, as much as any of the directories. So I certainly recommend that being an editor. But I'm also a consumer of Joomla products, so I use it quite a bit myself. Um, use a trusted developer, you know, especially if you're getting custom code done. It's always nice that if you've interacted with um, developers who have been producing good solid extensions and you've evaluated them like we've talked about or through your own use or third parties, you can actually go to them for custom code also or just use their other extensions, for example. So that's, you know, that's a really good value that you provide to your clients um, or to your projects. And you really need to carefully evaluate uh, new, new developers, new products get on the scene. You want to make sure they didn't just jump in, throw some sloppy code together, you know, especially the new developers. Uh, and these are just kind of, <laughs> so I'll, I'll make a comment here. I, I did this entire presentation on, on my iPad to prove that something could be done on the iPad besides mail and stuff. So um, I grabbed these icons out, but they, they don't all make sense. So I'm going to try and remember them all. Encryption, bad. Uh, this is the JEXEC. It's supposed to be bookmarks, right? But you know, you need a JEXEC at the front of every file. File permissions, you know, look, you can search for the 777. Uh, Index.html in most folders, unless you're developing, of course. Um, and uh, try not to hack the core if you can help it. OK, so I'd like, uh, I'd love to hear any questions uh, that you have. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, please. Um, if a component uses forms, front end forms, uh, look at, uh, at the code. If it uh, contains a Yay token, uh, if it doesn't contain a Yay token, if, I mean, the Yay token is uh, uh, used for extra security. Right. So uh, you can only, only uh, use the form for five minutes or something. Otherwise, you can uh, save this form to your, for your um, uh, desktop, change it, and then submit it. And another thing is, uh, if you uh, uh, see components that use where you can upload images, yep. um, try to upload a non image, like a PHP file, or a PHP file with a name uh, GPG at the end. Right. Uh, if it's accepted, uh, well, it's bad. There's an issue. Yeah. That's, those are really great examples. I'm going to add those in for the next time I give this. Um, what I really. I, oh, wow. Really? Wow. Uh, but uh, to comment about images, uh, anywhere in here use the JCE advanced tools, the subscriber tools for JCE? Um, these are add-ons to the uh, WYSIWYG editor, right? Uh, they, what's really nice about them is you can, can, of course, you list the files that you allow them to upload. Um, but they also let you trap users in personal directories for their images so that even if they happen to get something in, hopefully you can keep them in there. You know, it's kind of like an extra added layer of security, but it's all related to these image uploads. And even if it's not more secure, it's nice if you have a lot of contributors that each have their own sets of images that they can't delete other people's images, <laughs> which is very handy. So, yes? Right. Of, of methods uh, within classes, uh, use of global variables. Uh, those are well, there's MVC structure, right? I mean, there's a numerous um, code quality issues that we could look at. There's a little beyond the focus of this talk, but, but, but very much of them can, can be determined uh, statically. Right. With the spectrum and the of the code. Right. And uh, I would appreciate if we could have these numbers on, on the jet. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I think somebody may have thought about that before, trying to get average, like uh, comments per per line or comments per function or something. Also, you know, is the code commented well so you can follow it and understand it? I mean, those are. We've been trying to get some changes on how things work on the JED. Um, oh, one of the disadvantages to the JED, I think I put it up there, I didn't say it, was anonymous votes. We're trying to get rid of the anonymous, but you know, so there's some changes we're trying to make, but changes come slowly. Uh, but those are things as we rebuild the uh, rating system. We're hoping to give a more um, uh, what's the word? Um, broken down view of the rating. So you don't just say it's 5 out of 10 or whatever. You say it's for uh, functionality, it's 4 out of 5. For uh, HTML, XHTML compliance, it's 3 out of 5. You know, so we break it down and uh, make it more granular. That's the word I'm looking for, granular. Right. And is that something you can determine automatically, like with a script? OK, so that's something that we could build into our editorial. Um, it might be hard to do initially. But for all new extensions, it could be built in, probably. It's only, it's only um, um, statistic of, of the first upload. Right, uh, right. Well, you could set it. You could, you could run it. You, you, could, you could extract it. Or, yeah, and even nightly, you could run a cron on an 
X number, you know, X percentage of the JED to kind of keep it up to date, you know, with a reasonable amount. That's not a bad idea. Any other questions? Yes. When I explained why I went to JED, which was looking for extensions for a particular user yeah. to my wife, she said, oh, it's like a clothing store for Joomla. Does it have a style advisor? <laughs> By which she meant, is there any place where you can see that this extension and that extension and that extension match a harmonious fit? Yeah, does not. That would be great. I, in this case, the emperor has no clothes, for sure, I think is what's happening. There is not, and, and that's the other thing that you gain. You have to gain the experience by trial and error. Uh, or if you go to a template club and they happen to have on their demo of that, of a similar template, a bunch of extensions that you want to use, and maybe you could say, well, with some work and some CSS, they could be fitting nicely. I mean, that's the big, biggest drawback of um, Joomla is getting the, the extension to look like they're built in the same way. As everyone, the code quality has, I think, for sure gone up in the last two years as everyone has gone NBC because they've, you know, a lot of extensions where they're using custom um, CSS classes and sort of, you know, that's getting less and less. They still have them, but they're wrapped inside the standard Joomla ones, which means that their headings and stuff mostly match, and the better ones are doing this. We still have a lot of legacy code um, because we have a legacy plugin still, so I'm, I'm guessing Joomla 1.6 will be better, but you're still going to have to go through that. I will make one example. Has anyone used uh, the, de the beta of Ninja Board? Ninja Board, it's a native form coming out from uh, Ninja, uh, Ninja Forge. Uh, they're using module Chrome so that as soon as it just detects whatever you have and matches the style very, very quickly. So you have much, much less customization. And they have a demo where they have like four different template clubs, I think, and you can just look at like 10 templates. And as soon as you switch it, just they haven't done anything except install it on the uh, template, the template vendor's um, templates, demo sites, basically. And it, it really looks, uh, using this module Chrome technology, which I'm not an expert on, really looks to be. Um, a good way to go. I don't know how many other developers are thinking about. Anyone else here thinking about using Module Chrome? Developers in the room? Yeah, I don't know what it is. What does it do exactly? Uh, it's basically a preset set of styles that allow you to apply things uh, kind of globally with a set of presets. But I, what I don't understand is how, how the, I guess what these template providers must be doing is, is creating an additional set of Chrome um, presets. I'm guessing, so that other, other extensions can pull those presets. Because the pre presets on these template vendors, they don't look like the standard Joomla template ones at all, right? They're, you can think of one of these fancy rocket themes. It doesn't look anything like bees or whatever, Milky Way. So uh, anyway, I, I'm guessing, without having looked too much, that the template vendors are providing another set of presets that then can be used with any extension written to take advantage of module Chrome. Okay. That almost sounds like I know what I'm talking about. It's just style related, yeah. Uh, oh, did you? No, I'm saying it's a part of the template, yeah. is what I mean, in terms of the display of the template. Yeah. But it can be reused. Those styles can be used throughout your extensions if you write your extension in a way that yeah. takes advantage of them. Right. So, 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 so the module has not to be aware of the Chrome. That's, uh, I'm sure that's true. You look at Ninja Board, and I would love for you to tell me how they're applying Ninja Board uh, module Chrome to their component. I would love to know. I don't know, but they're doing it. There's no question. <coughs> and it looks gorgeous, and it's fast and easy, and there's no extra custom, very little extra customization. I'm not sure how they've applied it. I'd be happy to take any more questions. All right, well, thank you all for coming. Enjoy the rest of the day.